Hello, hello. James, you say we're live? Okay, great. Well, good morning to you. And we are getting set for the next webinar of the day. Uh, Thomas Keogh again. We were introduced, for those of you that are returning, we were introduced last week and I did the um, kind of fun and really unique webinar on who makes the world run. Uh, if you are one of the two people that have sent in your final assignment for that, I have that. And as soon as I can have time today, I'll get you an answer to that. So welcome back. Welcome back. Happy Monday to you. I hope you had a great weekend and uh, stayed uh, busy around the house, stayed busy with your academic work, stayed busy doing things for your mom and dad as much as you could. So a reminder, I'm Thomas Keough. I was a teacher here for maybe 15 years. In the last seven or eight years, I've been traveling the world and helping families learn about Delphian through our admissions department. But today I'm a teacher again. Uh, this is my third segment of time with you and my second webinar. Very, very exciting. Very, very excited. Excuse me. So today we're going to do um, a topic that you would categorize into character education, uh, more specifically ethics. And the section that we're going to cover today is essentially what is reason. Um, I want to explain one thing before we go. We're going to use this uh, as part of our webinar. You may or may not have one of these at home. This is a little demonstration kit. This is a demo kit. Um, this is one that the school has here. This is one that I have. You can see it has different uh, things in it. Um, you know, this is a button. This is, these are, um, this is a thing for a stapler. This is a little clip. And here are different blocks right here. So how do we use this kit? Well, let's say we're, we're trying to demonstrate a concept, a principle, like a simple principle like um, working to make money. Show me somebody working to make money. Well, I could take this kit and I could show a person on the table here. And I can show a person and I can show another person. And let's say this guy, Bob, has a hammer and he wants to sell it to this person. So Bob is going to talk to him Here's what the hammer is, here's how it works, these are the different features of it. And when he gets the idea that he wants to buy the hammer, then he's gonna take some money, hand it over to the person selling the hammer, and then the hammer gets given to Bob. So a very simple demo. We can demo more concepts, things like exchange, things like money, things like how do you uh, plant a flower, but we use these pieces to represent different things and ideas here out in the real world around us. So that's a demonstration kit. It's just different objects and pieces put together. If you haven't put one together yet as part of the other webinars, go ahead and take a second to do it. Look around your desk, look around your room, look around the house. Maybe your mom or your, your dad, whoever's with you, can help you put together a small kit because we are going to use this today in our assignment. Okay, so what are we doing today? We are doing a topic called the ethics book. The ethics book here, based on the works of Hubbard. Um, philosopher who has given us some of the tools that we use at Delphian here, study tools, ethics tools, planning tools. Today we're going to talk about ethics. So let me pull up the um, first assignment here for it, the first reading assignment. This is, if you were joining me on my last webinar, this is a much easier read. The concepts are a little more unique, but the reading is very easy. So here we go. We're going to um, start with your learning guide. This is your learning guide, so you want to make sure that you have this available. I've already put my name at the top, and we're going to now do the first step, which is define the word succeed and the word constructive. So, to succeed, obviously, you probably know what that means. It means to do well at, to have an aim or something you want to accomplish, and to do it successfully. Ideally, you're trying to succeed in a positive way. You're trying to succeed and get the results of something that is going to help you and help others. Uh, the other word to find here in the first step is called constructive. Well, to construct means to build, to make, to create. Uh, maybe you're taking pieces or parts, or you're um, doing certain things in school or certain things at work, and you're doing several things to do something positive to create or build something, and that would be constructive. Okay, so here we go. So there's the ethics book. I'm going to push through these first few pages, and we're going to read together um, one of the first sections, pages one through nine. Pages one through nine, okay? So it says, most people want to be happy. I'm sure we'd agree with that. I want to be happy, and I'm sure you do too. Most people want to succeed. <clears throat> 
Most people want to be able to get along with others. Teamwork, basically. Most people want to do constructive things. Always good to fix a leak on the roof. But people don't always know how to be happy or successful. Oops. Sometimes, sometimes people do destructive things and they don't know what to do about it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sometimes people aren't able to get along and work with others. That isn't much fun. Okay, so here's a definition of something that is important for us. Good is being more successful than one is unsuccessful along constructive lines. So good is being more successful than one is unsuccessful along constructive lines. Pretty sure you probably know what that means along constructive lines, but towards the aim of doing something positive, doing, being more successful than not successful towards a constructive or a positive direction. And finally, for this little section, evil is the opposite of good. And anything which is destructive more than it is constructive along any of the various parts of life. And uh, not today, but actually tomorrow on schedule, we're going to learn about some really cool details about the parts of life, what they're made up of, and um, how you can make good decisions in relationship to those parts. So evil is the opposite of good, and is anything which is destructive more than it is constructive along any of the various parts of life. Okay, so I am going to now sign off my learning guide. So I just signed off the first two steps. Now, let me come back to you so you can see all of me. So we have the first assignment. First assignment. Step three on the learning guide. This is the learning guide to remember. We're going to do step three right now. And it is demonstrate with whatever objects you wish to use. So I showed you the demonstration kits as an example. Uh, you could use people. You could use an example, a live example, if you have another student with you or a parent. So demonstrate with whatever objects you wish to use, A, good, and B, evil. You don't have to demonstrate this to me. If you want to put a comment in the question and answer, remember all comments, all assignments, all work should be done in the question and answer box. If you want to tell me answers for A, good, and B, evil, that's fine, but I'd rather have you demonstrate it with the kit or maybe demonstrate it in the real world around you right now. So go ahead and take a minute to do that, okay? It looks like we have a couple comments in here, so I'm just gonna open it up and see. Okay, Sarah says, hello. Hello, Sarah, nice to see you again. And Arabella says, constructive in this case means fixing something. Yes, it can definitely mean fixing something, Arabella. Um, it can also mean creating something. It can also mean um, starting something building something that is positive. Constructive can also be you hear like when you give uh, people advice, you want to give constructive advice. Or if I was going to, you know, build something that I could construct it, like this is, this is construction, but I'm building something that is positive in this case, that is useful. So constructive is the opposite of destructive. And Varchas, Varchasva, I'm not sure if I said that wrong, my apologies, is what is the meaning of destructive? Hmm. We're going to get into that a little bit, but destructive is something that is harmful, something that destroys. If something does less good than, um, less good than it should, then this could be destructive and harmful to somebody. Okay, so go ahead and now take a minute and do the assignment. Demonstrate A, good, and B, evil. I'll give you a couple minutes, and then we're going to do our first essay. <clears throat> okay, so our first essay for today. I'm assuming you did that. 
Um, if you have a question or need some help, just put it, put it in the question and answer and I'll get to you as soon as I can. So the essay is, give three examples of good actions and three examples of evil actions. So you can put this into the question and answer. And I changed it, by the way, I think it said five before, but I made it smaller. So give three examples of good actions and three examples of evil actions. And go ahead and put that in your question and answer and I'll wait for you. Okay, somebody's asking a question about the next class. Um, Barchazava, maybe you read on. So if you could not read on farther than we are, then you won't have that question. And the simple answer to what are the eight dynamics is that they are parts or pieces of life. And we're going to get to that in a little bit later tomorrow as part of our class, okay? So that's a little bit further into the book. So hang tight there. Please don't read so far ahead. <clears throat> yes, that's right. Someone said constructive, or this is um, adya. Constructive means building something. Destructive means destroying. That's exactly right. Could we get the definition of good and bad? Well, sure. I mean, I, I would tell you that good from what we read before, says good is being more successful than one is unsuccessful. So good is when you do something positive, when you do something that helps somebody. If you give somebody a compliment, that's good. If you pick up trash off the ground, that's good. If somebody yells at you and you make the decision to not yell back and to maybe smile and say, I'm sorry that you're angry at me, you don't do more harm back to that person, then this could be good. Um, bad. Mm, you know, bad is a little bit like uh, judgment, but bad is something that isn't helpful to someone. Um, it could be based on opinion, but it's something that is not so helpful to someone else. So we will get into this a little bit more as we go forward. Okay, here come in some great answers. Good can mean that you help someone, and evil can mean you hurt someone, says Ethan. I agree completely. So Serena says, helping, cooking, and donating money, good. Destroying, fighting, being illegal. Yeah, I agree with all of those. Very, very true. So Armjad, to help my mom, to clean house, and to study. Those are the three good things. Okay, excellent, excellent. Uh, somebody's asking, how do I get the check sheet? You know, the check sheet is in the links that were sent earlier to your parents. In the links to the webinar, uh, in that same email are links to the check sheet and links to the course. So I'm so sorry if you don't have it, but I'm going to explain every step as we go through. So that should help you for right now. Good actions, donations to charity, or donations, charity work, being in a good mood. I agree. Thank you, Sarah. Emmett. Emmett says it can also mean to hurt feelings. Um, that could be bad, I guess. If you, if, or if someone has hurt feelings and you help someone when they're sad, that can be very good. God, you guys have great answers. They're flooding in here. Good. From, from Ella. Helping the poor, volunteering at food banks, and helping your parents. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Bad. Stealing, littering, and hurting people. I love it. I have to tell you that I find myself often picking up garbage on the ground just when I see it just to make the world a little bit cleaner. Sophie, good, making a donation to a cancer hospital, writing a book for children, adopting a child. Those are some big, those are some big goods, Sophie. I totally agree, uh, I totally agree. If you can do all three of those in this lifetime or help someone to do so, you'll be in great shape. Also hear evil from Sarah, evil actions, stealing, murdering, suicide. Yes, agree, those are some big ones. You guys' answers are great and they're flooding in. Uh, Sophie says, evil, littering, hitting someone, blaming someone else for what you did. Excellent. Not too good to not be honest, that's for sure. All right, I think we're getting to the end here. And Aiden says, good, someone helps someone who is hurt, someone gives someone a compliment. I cheer up my sister when she is sad. Wow, that's beautiful. I imagine that's your younger sister. Here's Arabella, helping someone if they can't do something on their own. When you do something kind without being asked, that's beautiful, just being kind all around and help others to do the same. 
I love it. Great attitude, great way to live. Evil things are like judging people without getting to know them, bullying because you have nothing better to do, and never helping and taking things for granted. I love it. Someone says helping the poor, huh? That's Kaya. Okay, you guys. I think I'm going to have to move on here just a little bit, but Serena says bad. Not being in a good mood and spreading that bad mood. I agree. And Ida, good listening, studying, making someone happy. Excellent. And then we have lastly here, Ahmad, hitting, stealing, and lying. Okay, excellent, guys. So I'm going to wrap up there so we can move on, okay? Excellent, excellent examples. Okay, so let's sign those two steps off. I'm going to do that on my uh, thing. So we're now on step five. So I just, as you can see, I just signed off the four on my um, things. And if you, if you have any more uh, to submit, then we'll get to them when we, when we come back in just a minute there. So now we're going to do step five, which is the next section to read. It's, we're going to read pages 10 through 15. I'm going to pull them up here so you can follow along as I go, okay? Here we go. So, when people want to be good, when they do something evil, even if it was an accident, they feel unhappy about it. They try to keep themselves from doing other evil things. Okay, moving on up. For example, if someone is doing harmful things and he can't seem to stop doing them, he may leave in order to protect others from his harmful acts. Okay, moving away from the basketball game there. Sometimes people will get sick to keep themselves from doing harmful things. Big game today, not going. Sometimes people will even get themselves kicked out of a group to keep from doing harmful things in that group. Criminals often leave clues because they want to be caught and put in jail. And you might think that's a little bit crazy, like why would a criminal want to be caught? Well, statistics show they do get caught. So that's, they leave clues and they get caught and they get put behind bars. They can't stop themselves, so they want someone else to stop them. Okay, one more page here. There must be a better way to be good. Okay, so if we just review that very quickly, very quickly, very simple here. People want to be good. When they do something evil, even if it was an accident, they feel unhappy about it, and they try to keep themselves from doing other evil things. Here's an example, leaving in order to protect others from his harmful acts. Here's an example, getting sick or staying home as if you were sick, getting kicked out of the group, or a criminal who leaves clues behind. So these are all examples of things someone might, speak, might do. So it says there must be a better way. Okay, so let's move from that. So that was step five, and now we're going to do step six, which is a demonstration essay. So I want you, you can demonstrate with your demo kit if you want, if you have someone there to demonstrate to, or if you feel like you want to use this, or you can write it in the essay, in the question and answer box, and I'll share it with the group. But give an example of something someone might do to keep himself from doing evil things. Like we, we went over two or three examples. You can make up your own with a similar idea, but make up your own example of something someone might do to keep himself from doing evil things. And I'll look forward to your answers in the question and a box. Oh my gosh, we have many here. Let's see what else is flowing in here. Yeah, that's earlier, we got that. Okay, earlier Matthias said, helping people, giving food, cleaning the environment. I agree. And bad, Sarah mentioned, doing drugs. Yes. Okay, so these are the examples of the assignment. So um, I think these are examples of the assignment. So Sarah says maybe uh, doing drugs. And then here Sophie says, making up a story of why they can't go or why they can't do something so they wouldn't hurt somebody. Excellent. And Katya says, running away from home. Yes, very true. Uh, hopefully we don't do that, and, but even if we do it, just to get outside and race away from our parents, huh? Ariana says, don't want to be mean or harmful, so they keep 
to themselves. That's very good. So kind of shy or staying at home and not going out to be with friends and other people. Arabella says, practice doing things that are good so that you fall into that habit. Okay, that's excellent. That's what we were talking about before. Julia, quitting an activity if you keep fighting with other group members. Yes, totally agree. Lying to anyone and everyone, that's a negative, that's right. Okay, so we are up to date, so keep your questions, keep your answers coming in. Here is Serena says, they pretend to be sick or under the weather, which is basically not being well. So they, so they say, no, I can't go. It's exactly right. It's funny, isn't it? I think we can all be guilty of that, that every once in a while when we don't want to face something at school or don't want to face something really tough at work, we might get sick and be a little bit uh, home for the day or home for the morning, if you will. So this is not a good habit, and I wouldn't make a habit of it, but it's good to recognize when you might do it. Uh, Sarah says, not doing harmful things, but, but tempting things such as drinking in the first place. That's a very good point. Okay, so what we're looking for is someone steals something, says Amjad, hides it, and his mom finds it and punishes him. Okay, that's true. That's a, that's a consequence of doing something and then getting in trouble for it. Um, and it also could be an example of what you would do to keep you from doing harmful things. In other words, you hide it, and then it's not hidden really well, mom finds it, and then you're in trouble. And maybe you won't keep doing those evil things. All right, so I'm gonna wait another minute here. Let me just look at the time. Yeah, good. And now we're gonna get into another section of what we just read. This is very, very good, guys, and your answers are really good. All right, so let's sign that off. We're now down to the first section. We're now gonna go into what the, what the name of this webinar was today called Making Decisions. Making Decisions. All right, there's three words to define at the top. Um, I'm gonna help you with it, just my own verbal description of it. The first one is data. Uh, data can be facts or statistics or bits of information or things you observe that are true, that can be demonstrated as true. Um, you can see it, you know, the data is this is a can. Uh, the data is my name is Thomas. Uh, the data is this is a check sheet. The piece of data is we have various people, uh, looks like 30 or more, I love it, participating in the webinar right now. Then we have a word effort, effort. Effort means to use mental or maybe physical energy to try to accomplish something. So if you work at something, then you're putting effort towards that. This can be like lifting logs or it can be mental like a math problem or trying to get the answer to a science question. Prediction. Prediction essentially means here you are now and you've got some data and you want to try to figure out what's gonna happen in the future. Could be 30 seconds in the future, could be a minute in the future, but you're going to make an estimate and uh, some kind of an answer or a conclusion as to what you think could occur in the future. Okay, so let's now read pages 17 through 25. I see that somebody put something in the chat room. If you could put that in the, in the uh, Q&A, that would be better, okay? Instead of the chat room. All right, here we go. So the next section are pages 17 through 25, but this section is called reason. And don't worry, we're gonna define what reason is as we go forward here. So reason. Reason is being able to use the data you have. Hmm, what should I do here? Looking at a book. To figure out something new. So he looked at the person in his way, he studied it a little bit, and then he obviously did the shot over the person's head. Not complicated. Hard to get it in the basket every time. Reason is also thought plus effort. So here he is reading the book, putting some thought into it about music, and then practicing, making the effort. You can use reason to predict what might happen. So here you have data, with some thinking and some effort, and you can estimate the future. It's like he's baking. You can use reason to decide things for yourself. I'll try to pass the ball. 
you can use reason to do things. Okay, excellent. All right, so let's sign those off now. So now we have a demonstration. So you have your kit, you have your demo kit. This is not an essay. This is a demonstration. We're gonna do an essay in just a minute, but I want you to use your demo kit if you can have these pieces together or some objects in the room. And you're gonna do step three, which is demonstrate the concept of reason. And it says reason, let me pull off the screen here. Sorry about that, here I am. Reason is being able to use the data you have to figure out something new. And B, reason is thought plus effort. So demonstrate using this kit an example of that. An example of that. Reason is being able to use the data you have to figure out something new. Could be a math problem, figuring out a more advanced math problem. Could be something in sports. Reason is also thought plus effort. Okay, I want to achieve something. I learn a little bit. I put in some work and I accomplish that and I use some judgment towards getting there. So go ahead, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to go ahead and complete that assignment. I'm gonna move us along here so we stay on schedule, by the way. Although I think it's lunch at noon and there's nobody after me, so we can always use five minutes there. So use your demo kit there. Reason is being able to use the data you have to figure out something new. And reason is thought plus effort. <clears throat> and then after that, we're gonna do step four together, which is an essay that you can put in the question and the answer box. And I'm gonna to look to see if I have any other questions and the answers to address real quick. What is statistics? Um, statistics. Usually you see statistics in graphs, sort of like this week, I, I worked out four times a week for 30 minutes, I could graph that. The next week I worked out six times a week for 30 minutes, I could graph that and my workouts are up. Or you could do a statistic for the money you make in a week, if you're at a job and you work hourly maybe, so your pay can be different. You could do a graph of how many hours you worked in a week or a day, and then how much money you make. You could do a statistic of how many inches of rain is there in a year in Oregon? A little bit more than some other places. So statistics are, are measurements of something in a given time compared to the same thing in a, little, in a little bit later time. Okay, moving forward here. Okay, so now let's do the next essay. So the essay is, and I want you to go ahead and put this in the question and answer, describe two times when you have used reason. So this is now you in your life, the concept of reason as we defined it, being able to use the data you have to figure out something new and reason is also thought plus effort. So give me a short essay, just quickly describe very briefly, two times when you have used reason. And I'll see if we can get through those examples here before we move on to the next section. Okay, Serena says, when I was in a basketball game, I was covered, so I passed it to my teammate. Excellent, similar to the example in the book. I'm curious if you play other sports and if you could give me another example, Serena, on using that in sports. Or how did you use reason at home once or in school in some ways? That would be great to hear. And Sophie says, to figure out how to do a skill based on a different skill, also to figure out how to tie a balloon and to do it. Excellent. When did you learn to tie a balloon? Was that recently or uh, Sophie a few years ago? And how, the key thing is here, how did you use reason? So not just an example of it, but describe two times when you have used reason, okay? So try to make them as specific to your own life as you can. Someone else talked about, yeah, balloon. Ethan, I used reason to find the definition of a word in a book and to find out how to pass a kid the soccer ball in soccer. I love it. I love it. Very, very good. 
So from Haiti, oh, okay, see Haiti. So I think Amjad is the father. Haiti, riding my bike, excellent. And how to play my guitar. Yes, and those things take consistent reason and maybe more reason to get better at it, huh? When I was, uh, oh, Sophie says when I was younger and now I'm 10. I can't see what age it is, it says percent, but this is when you learn to tie a balloon, okay, thank you. Five, okay, got it, Sophie. And Aiden says, I used reason by reading and looking at examples on how to do an art project, and I used effort to do the project, and it came out pretty good. I love it. And now we have Serena. I was playing third base in baseball, and I got an out, and I saw there was time to get two outs, so then I threw it to her and got the other out. Great reason, and it's so fast, so instant there, huh? Ella says, I use reason to finish courses and to do certain skills in gymnastics. That makes sense. It's excellent. That's great that you do gymnastics. That takes a lot of work and a lot of discipline. Julia says, when cooking, I needed it to make the cake rise, So when, and I used baking soda. This is what you use to make it rise. And I also use reason when I learned to play the piano. Excellent. I got Sophie when you did the balloon. Thank you, when you were five and now 10. So another anonymous one says, while playing volleyball, the ball was coming towards my head, and instead of setting it, I stepped out of the way and let my teammate bump it. Makes a lot of sense. A safe bump and then a step coming. And um, Sarah says, when I had to figure out skating for a competition, I practiced every day. Excellent, thought plus effort. Katia says, how to play the piano, I figured out a math problem. Two very useful ways to use reason. And Matthias says, I was playing soccer and I saw a weakness in my opponent. So I use that weakness against him. I love it. And hopefully you succeeded in that one. Okay, great. So we're going to move on here because we got a couple more steps to do before the end of this webinar. All right, so we're going to read now the next few pages here, pages 26 through 30. Your examples are very good, guys. So now, so we learned here, let's go on to page 26. But sometimes people don't use reason when they should. Then things don't turn out so well. Yikes. Here he is wanting to make a pie. He just throwing it all in there, doesn't do much reading or thought, and it looks like it's not a great pie. Wonder what this will do. Mm, I guess that's a crazy mixer, and it goes everywhere because he's not ready. And then, can you fix this, says the sister or the young girl. No. I should have thought about what I was going to say, as the girl's now crying because he was a little bit mean and distracted. Well, everyone else does. Looks like he's getting offered a cigarette, and he thinks about it, and maybe he's going to do it because, well, everyone else does it. Yikes. Okay, good. So now, the last page is, when people use reason, they survive better, and the people around them survive better. Okay, good. So now let's back up a step here. So that was the next section. Now I want you to just describe to me this is a little bit of a negative question, so you got to be honest. You don't have to tell me the worst things in your life. But this question is the next essay. Describe two times when you should have used reason and didn't. So two times in your life where you realized you should have used reason and you didn't. So you might have to think here is maybe the outcome was negative and the outcome was not so smart. Uh, but then if you can look at it now and see that, ooh, I could have made a better decision there, or maybe you realize it right after and you fixed it. That's okay. So just give me two examples of two times when you should have used reason and didn't. And I'll look for your answers in the question and answer box here. I think we're right on schedule here. We've got a little work to do. <clears throat> Earlier, Ada says, I got a flute as a return gift on my birthday. I played the violins. I used my head and thought myself to, taught myself to play the flute. Good. Serena said, when I was young, I was holding a razor, and then I cut my face badly. Yikes, okay. So these are examples of not using reason. Sophie, when I argued with my mom and when I yelled at my little cousin. All right, well, that's honest. I hope you guys don't mind I'm sharing these. 
Maybe I won't say your name. You know what your example was. Uh, another student says, I punched my friend because I got super mad at him, but that was only one time. Okay, great. I'm saving the names here, but you know your example. This way I, we won't, we won't uh, announce your failure to use reason to the rest of the class. Um, I was on a pole. Another person says I was on a pole and I fell and hurt my arm. And, oh, okay, where you, you know, a person was working with their buddy and gave them a bath and things didn't go so well. Another person says I lied to my dad about my phone being with me in the bathroom. Okay, that's good. So not, not using reason and the consequence is not so good. Ah, oh, someone said I wanted to pick fruits from a tree I climbed on a weak branch and fell and hurt myself. Okay, that makes sense. I was holding a glass in a weird way and it broke in my hand and I got a cut on my hand. Okay, that could be an accident, but if you do hold it in a weird way, that's an example, right? Another student says, I baked enough cookies to try to make them without a recipe. I made bread with chocolate chips. And then another person said, I threw a flower at my friend's head during an argument. Okay, well, a flower is not so bad, not too heavy. I hope it didn't hurt him. I hit my brother with a ball thinking he would move even though he was closing his eyes. Okay, not very good reason, huh? All right, how are we doing here? Okay, I think we have time just for a couple more. I may not get to all these examples right now. Uh, this is another student who says, I got mad at my friend and I knew it wasn't all right, so I fixed it and I decided not to be mean. And another person said she was a little bit, same girl said I was a little bit mean and jealous once, but then I snapped right out of it. Excellent, guys. Excellent. One of our kids says I shoved someone when he was playing soccer and I kept running past him and then I apologized later and he said it was okay. Someone said I tried to make a pancake but didn't use reason and it didn't turn out well. And I was supposed to study, and instead I watched cartoons. All right, the last example says um, uh, someone got into a little bit of an argument with one of their first grade kids, uh, and so he slide tackled them and then lied that he did not. So these are all great examples. Um, and then one other person says, I was a little bit angry at my younger brother, and um, I didn't want to play with him. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there, guys, because I have to move on. I love all your examples, but I want to move on and make sure we can get to the last two assignments of the day. Because this is going to be, uh, the last one is going to be a little bit more positive. Using reason. Using reason. All right, here we go. Okay, so pages 31 through 35. Here we go. So we're going to read this again. When people use reason, they survive better, and the people around them survive better. There he goes, passing around to his friend, makes the basket. Well, let's see. She says, can you fix this? He says, well, let's see. I'm kind of busy, but I might have some time. There's a good brother, huh? No, thanks. Might be bad for my game. This is good, says the basketball player to the cigarette guy. And this person is just learning to effectively or successfully play the flute. So those are very simple examples examples and it says you can use reasons to make decisions about your life and we're going to see how that works now we're not going to do that today but we are going to do that in my class tomorrow at the same time same place i'll be here and you can be there all right so the last thing we're going to do for the day is one more essay one more essay and here it is step number eight if you didn't print it out it says Give three examples, and I moved it down to three to keep it simpler. Give three. If you can only come up with two, that's fine, too. Give three examples of using reason to survive better. Three examples of using reason to survive better. And we will share almost all of these if we can before we wrap up today's webinar. It's like our timing is going to work out just right. Yeah, perfect. I like being on schedule. I'm not sure about you guys, but I enjoy getting on schedule. <clears throat> okay, so we'll give you some time to get that answer in here. And the question again was give three examples of using reason to survive better. Okay. When you are buying stuff. All right, good. Um, someone without a name, that's what Serena said. Someone without a name here, anonymous, says, I jog so that I can be healthy. I love it. 
I do um, some running on treadmills, and then I do some jogging around a indoor or outdoor, but we have an indoor track at our school above our, our um, basketball court. It's really kind of cool up on a second floor running track. Okay, more examples here coming in. Nope, not quite. So I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of your examples here for the final assignment for today. And we're gonna be just about right on schedule, maybe a couple minutes after, before we head out to lunch. And after this, you guys can go to lunch and then come back for another webinar. Ethan says, using the correct amount of ingredients when making cupcakes. Good, excellent, great example. Katya says, don't break my arm. I wanna, I wanna be smart and don't fall off a cliff. Okay, good. Now, uh, let's remember this is examples of using reason. Okay, it doesn't say in your life. It just says three examples of using reason to survive better. You, na you nailed it, you got it. It doesn't have to be from your life. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Making cookies the right way, says Sophie. Being kind, writing a story, and a positive story. I love it. And Ariana says, I eat so I live. <laughs> That's right. And you got to eat good food, not too much sugar, not too much junk food. And uh, Hadia says, my cousin was talking nonsense. I was angry, but I talked to her nicely. Perfect. That's great reason in your own life. Julia says, taking a break from jogging to drink water, eating healthy food instead of candy, making an effort to do homework instead of taking a nap. I agree, and I love it. I wear warm clothes that I do not catch a cold. That's excellent. I don't know that person's name because it doesn't list it there. And here is from Arabella. When talking to someone, when going to public places, and when studying, these are all three ways that she uses reason. I do. Somebody just asked me, oh, this is Varchesva. By the way, you sent an email, and I answered your email, Varchesva. I hope you saw it. And it says, do I remember Raymond Chala? Of course I do. I know who he is. You bet. Thanks for asking. Sarah says, when people drink, they shouldn't drive for a while. That's a great example of using reason. The first thing is maybe don't drink too much. A little bit, not too much, because you don't want to be out of control ever, I would say. Personal, personal opinion. Serena says, to be kind, even if you don't like the person you're talking to. Great example. Okay, I'm going to take a couple extra minutes and try to get through all of these. If someone wants to do something, says Aiden, and they know it's bad, I can say no. If I want something from the store, I pay for it. Don't steal it. And if I need help, I can ask instead of messing something up. That is so true. Matthias says, don't harm someone, don't bully, and don't forget or fail to do your homework. Excellent examples. What is my name, says Sophia. Sorry, or Sophie. My name is Thomas Keo. Thomas Keo, spelled K-E-O-U-G-H. Nice to meet you, Sophia, and everybody else here. Ariana says, pick up trash so the earth stays healthy. I love it. I love it, huh? And again, the person with another name, who is this? It says anonymous. I'm always curious who this is, sort of secretive there. It says, I go to school even on some days when I do not feel like it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So many ways in our lives that we can use reason. And Isabella says, working out to stay healthy. And then here's Matthias, don't start wildfires. I agree. Wild fires, just to get that done. Okay, guys, we're right on schedule towards wrapping up. If I see another example or two come in, I'll be sure to read it. Um, so thank you for attending. I'm going to do what we do here at Delphi and sign off the last step to the check sheet. So we made it onto page two, step eight. There we are, step eight today. So that's great progress. Now, tomorrow at the same time, uh, which is uh, was 11.15, we're going to do the next section, and it's, we're going to learn about the parts of life and this is going to help you in making decisions and having reason. To know about the parts of life is going to help you in making better decisions. We have lots of other webinars for you. I'm sorry, I don't have the printout right here, but you have seen them uh, by email that went to your parents. So make sure to attend. If you have any questions, if you need help on a link, if, we can, uh, if I can answer some questions for you, send me an email. Uh, you can send it to Thomas at events at Delphian.org. So have a great afternoon. I hope you do more of our webinars and that you stay busy and you stay happy and you stay productive today. Take care.